Probably my favorite old mining town in Nevada is Goldfield. It's referred to as a living ghost town and has about 200 people still live there. Gold was first discovered here in 1902. Between 1902 and 1940, Goldfield mines had produced over $90 million in ore, mainly in gold. In today's prices, that's about $1.8 billion. Once gold was discovered in 1902, the town grew rapidly and soon became the largest town in the state. The population dropped to about 5,000 people in 1910. One of the problems was that the cost of pumping brine out of the diggings made it uneconomical. The largest mining company left town in 1919. In 1923, a fire caused by a moonshine steel explosion destroyed most of the town's flammable buildings. Fortunately, some of the brick and stone buildings survived and still exist today. I recently did a video of a trip that Russ and I took a few years ago when the town was covered in snow. I'll put a link to that video in the description. I also did a video of the historic Goldfield High School, which was established in 1908 and closed in 1952. I'll send a link to that also. I've included a few photos of the school in the snow-covered town, but for a more detailed look, please check out those videos. Woke up cold and out of touch The photos and the memories will never be enough But if I could walk those streets today Would you still feel so far? Traveling through Nevada from Las Vegas, you can take Route 93 up to the eastern part of the state or Route 95 that goes through the western part of the state. Traveling up Route 95, you pass right through Goldfield in Esmeralda County. It's about three hours from Las Vegas. You know, I've been through there more times than I can count. I've done many photos there over the years, and I have put them together in this video. As you drive through the town, you notice a lot of old buildings and some that have been restored. There's no gas available in this town, as you can see by this old gas station. This is the Tex Rickard House, and... I was able to go through it in 2019 with a group of photographers. This is how it appeared in 2019, but since then, the house has been totally restored and, and can be rented for a stay. Tex was a well-known American boxing promoter, casino, and saloon owner. He was also the founder of the New York Rangers of the National Hockey League and builder of Madison Square Garden in New York City. Heading north, you see the Esmeralda County Courthouse on the right, and the old fire station on the left. The fire station was built in 1908, built using the locally quarried to Ashley Stone. The station was manned by volunteers who were unable to handle a fire in 1923 that wiped out 25 city blocks. And then a second fire the next year polished off most of what was left. Heading farther north, we see the historic four-story Goldfield Hotel, which was completed in 1908 built at a cost of between $300,000 and $400,000. It was reported to be the most spectacular hotel between Denver and San Francisco. The hotel was used as such until the end of World War II. Despite several renovation attempts over the years, it has remained unoccupied. It is said to be one of the most haunted buildings in Nevada. The TV show Ghost Adventures has filmed five episodes there over the years and have observed a significant amount of unexplained activity. I was fortunate enough to go on a tour there during the Goldfield Days, which is a celebration uh, that occurs every August, and it's a lot of fun if you ever have time to go there. I was also able to tour it with a group of photographers at a later date. I was not able to witness any paranormal activity, but that doesn't mean that there are any ghosts there. I just didn't see them that time. There is a gentleman's lounge on the first floor that is stairwell to the basement, which led to tunnels to the red light district so the men could visit prostitutes without being seen. The Brown Parker Garage and Auto Company is directly across the street from the hotel. It was one of the first Ford dealerships in Nevada. The building burned in 1923 along with half the town, or more, more than half the town, and was rebuilt and remained a garage until 1989. Heading back south on 95, we passed a lot of old buildings, including Dahlstrom's garage here. 
Not sure of the history of this garage, but uh, I think it's been closed for quite a while. Farther south, we find the Esmeralda County Courthouse, which is built in 1907 and still in use today. It is right across the street from the fire station. And down the street is an old garage. It seems to change every, every couple of years. Now it has a shell site on top of it. That's the Dinky Diner. It's a great place for a breakfast or lunch. Russ and I have stopped there several times for a good home-cooked meal. Heading back south to the edge of town to a turnoff for the International Car Force of the Last Church. This is a unique attraction. Over 40 cars and vehicles with the noses buried into the dirt. The vehicles are covered with art. The entry sign says that artists are welcome and taggers tolerated. The project was started in 2002 and converted in 2011. It's really kind of a fun place to drive through. Here's a photo of my daughter and son-in-law I took when they uh, went with me to enjoy Goldfield days. On the north end of town, you'll find the Goldfield Stop and the Rusty Cove Boutique. They have a few unique rooms to rent, and the boutique has some great women's accessories. This is a drun's eye view of the town. The view would have been so much different 102 years ago before the fire leveled 25 blocks in 1923. You want me to wake up But I'm strangled in my sleep You want me to shape up Heading south again, we turn down Euclid Avenue as we pass the First Methodist Episcopal Church that was built in 1912 and is now serves as the community center. One of the most visible buildings in town is the historic Goldfield High School, opened in 1908. 
and in use until 1952. Since I took these photos, the roof has been replaced, as have the steps in the front entrance. There's an ongoing restoration of the school from grants and donations. You know, I'll leave a link in the description if you'd like to make a donation. I did an extensive video of this school, to which I will leave a link also in the description. I'm including just a handful of photos, but go to the other video to see more. The Santa Fe Saloon on Fifth Avenue has been in use since 1905. It's Goldfield's oldest continually operating business. I've had a couple in there over the years. But I'm strangled in my sleep You want me to shape up But in my dreams I've found relief You want me to wake up But I've been out for so long Got plugs in my ears, got plugs in my soul. This is the Goldfield Consolidated Mines, Deep Mines Building, built in 1907 by Senator George Nixon and George Wingfield. They were the most influential men in Goldfield, politically and economically. They controlled most of the main operating mines in Goldfield. You know, I was fortunate to be able to get inside and take some photos. And the upstairs seem to be some apartments or offices. I want you to wake up, but you struggle in your sleep. I want you to shape up, but in your dreams you feel relief. Driving around in this town, you'll find so much to look at, from old buildings to artifacts.
Today I'm this rich in body It's broken down and aching Fears and I Can't seem for the life of me To hold back these tears And now they're Floating like a river Alongside the remnants of my soul Strung out in the heartland alone And damn this restless labor It's a blessing and a curse I work all day and turn all night Just to hide you from my hurt Thanks for watching the adventures of two old guys in the middle of nowhere the end of my road I got nothing left to show oh, no I'm strung out in the heartland alone.